My name is Adriana, yes, <laughs> correct. Um, and I'm delighted to be part of the panel and to share a little bit about our views, views about the interplay between heat, the decarbonization challenge that we have, and the, uh, the grid as well. So, uh, I was told just click here. Yeah, all good. Um, I will introduce Vattenfall very briefly because I'm aware that many times when I say, oh, we're Vattenfall, and it happened today, we go like, what? And what, how do you pronounce that? What does that even mean? So I'll be very briefly, and hopefully that's a little bit of context, and then I'll move to, to the main topic. Um, yes, we are the fifth Swedish, uh, the fifth, uh, because utility, in Europe, with us, we are a Swedish utility that are active across the whole value chain from generation all the way to distribution. We have six million customers. Our main markets are Sweden, which is the mothership, Germany, the Netherlands, and <coughs> the UK. In the UK, we have been operating for 10 years now, uh, but we have been taking quite a quiet role or not that visible for end customers. So we have been mostly on wind um, generation. We have invested over three billion pounds in that sector and in 2018 we made the decision to expand our operations in heat to the UK. We see that there is an exciting market here to shape what the energy system and a decarbonized energy system of the future will and is starting to look like. Um, we are a for-profit company. However, our ownership structure allows us to take a little bit of a different view in terms of long-term investments, the project that we pursue. This gets reflected in our vision to become fossil fuel free within one generation. And this is something that we see that informs the way we do business, the projects that we go forwards, even the approvals to get a project through for our, with our board of directors. So that's a little bit about us. I'm now going to talk about what our views are around this interplay of heat, decarbonization, and the grid. We have seen it in our markets, and we strongly believe that district heating is one of multiple answers to decarbonizing heat, and not only that, to contribute to the modern low-carbon energy system. Traditionally, if we think about heat networks or district heating, we tend to think about them as very passive systems where heat is generated in one side, then pumped through pipes to the other side, reaches hopefully the end customer. Uh, however, we believe that there is scope for this not to be only about heat and not to be such a passive system, but to enable the decoupling of supply and demand, to um, boost existing assets that are all around <laughs> where we live, the cities, the places where we work, to enable new business models. We don't need to necessarily think about the traditional way in which we just buy and that's it, and we, we have a demand and then we buy and that's, that's all the role that we have. We also believe that heat and heat, network, heat networks will play a key role in this um, enabling of more renewable generation. Um, Essentially, we could think about heat also as a big battery, just a different type of battery. It's not the chemical one, but it's still, we can have storage, we can help the grid. Um, so that's, that's our view about the role that district heating has in uh, the modern low carbon energy system. We appreciate that the challenge of decarbonizing heat needs to be addressed from different angles and we're completely on board of that and I'm really glad to hear basically link to bills, we'll, we'll just link to each other basically through this presentation, but link to bills uh, point around, it's not only about the search but it's also about how do we deal with the demand, right? How do we make sure that buildings are better insulated? Do we, are we even able to change the behaviors of the end customers and is the current business model or the offering actually enabling that despite we talk about wanting to enable or to influence their behaviors? It's also about supply and whether it's a heat network or whether it's an individual heat pump, direct electric or whatever system we want to talk about, it's about sizing it correctly, designing it for the right application 
And this comes to many angles, and it's how do we align the incentives of whomever is specifying it, whomever is designing it, whomever is going to end up operating it, to make sure that that system is designed on the right way. So the demand side, we take care of it. The supply side, and I'm sure I'm, I'm aware that I'm oversimplifying this, but the demand side, we take care of it. The supply side, we take care of it. And there are many more things that we could be doing, right? Us as operators, we should be delivering on the commitments that are done at planning stages so that it's not just a tick box, a CHP or whatever technology is installed and then is stranded, right? That we deliver on the carbon content that we need to supply to the buildings. So there are different things. And a big one for us is the system view. We firmly believe and we are seeing it in projects around our markets that it's not about the technology. We believe that it's about the concept of a low temperature network that will enable us to do what we were, what we were hearing at the very beginning. Around the, the, the example or the reference about the electricity network being quite flexible in ways and being able to receive um, energy from completely different sources. We believe and we are seeing that low temperature heat networks as one of the multiple answers enable us to do that. It's basically taking that concept where in a network, we don't only need to or are able to plug boilers or CHPs, but we are able to harvest low carbon sources of waste heat that are all around us and that in other way it would be extremely challenging and complex to harvest. Could be sewers, could be rivers, could be the tube, could be banks of refrigeration from supermarkets, could be coffee roasters that decide to change their operations and basically sell us a lot of the waste heat that they have. So um, I would like to close saying I agree with the, the, the panelists that have been before in the sense that it is not a single answer. I'm not here saying that heat networks is the answer for everything. They are an enabler and it's only in those cases where they can represent an affordable, a reliable and a sustainable solution, not for whomever designed them or the developer or us as operators, but for the end customers. So really looking forward to the discussion later. Thank you very much.